Welcome back to the channel and today we are going to do some work on the green flash. Now, for those of you that are new to the channel, what have we done so far? We've taken it for an inspection and we've realised that it needs some work going to, which might be beyond what I'm capable of doing here. But we've also fixed the heater. Do you remember when I went in and made my cuts and we fixed the heater so now it blows lovely warm uh, air just in time for the summer. Uh, and I've also fixed the brake light switch. Uh, but today it's the time, it's the turn of the brakes. We're going to change the rotors, we're going to change the pads, we're going to change the brake sensors, and then we're going to give uh, all the fluids a flush. So, let's get on with it. Right, how difficult can this be? Now, we're about to find out, that's for sure. I have all the kit that we need. Um, we've had to back it up onto ramps a little bit to jack it up. One thing I do want to say, however, is that I didn't have the locking wheel nuts for this car and Porsche don't supply the locking wheel nut by itself. They will charge you the locking wheel nut and four lug nuts that go with it for the, for the price of $244. So I said, no, I don't want you to do that. I want you to use your master key to unlock all the wheels, take all the locking wheel nuts out uh, and just replace them with lug nuts. That's all I want you to do. And even then they charge me 99 bucks. So. That's the first thing. So we've got to get the wheels off. Uh, I'm going to start at the back right. I'm going to start by jacking it up. is off and we are ready to go. Now I can already feel a lip here which means this disc is not good. So the way that things work here is that this brake disc or rotor is bolted on to the hub, the hub turns and then contained within the caliper you have the two brake pads and the caliper is connected through to the brake fluid reservoir which is connected to your through a couple of uh, cylinders to your brake pedal and then when you push the brake pedal it pushes fluid into the caliper which pushes the pistons and the pistons are connected to the brake pads and the brake pad provides the friction against here this lip is not good when you get a lip I'm told and you know you guys know I'm no expert that that is what we need to uh, replace so luckily I've got all the tools for that so what we're going to do to get this caliper off there is a cotter pin here which we need to get out the cotter pin holds this uh, longer pin in place which we'll need to push out that will enable all of this to come out and then these the thing here with the rounded edge is our brake pad there's one on this side and this wire is also our brake pad sensor and I've got some new ones of that coming as well so I think the first step is to unplug our uh, brake pad sensor from the rear on this side which I will show you in a moment um, then we're going to take off uh, allow this bracket to come out by undoing this 10 millimeter bolt down here um, which will allow us when we get this brake pad uh, this brake caliper uh, we'll be able to hang this somewhere um, but we won't be able to do that quite so easily if this is in place so that's the plan now, this is supposed to be covered in rubber. My one is exposed because I suspect that this rubber, which is supposed to extend down here, the rubber's all perished with age. So the aim is to, there we are, that's just come out. That should obviously be leveraging on something else. And it is this one here, which goes all the way around here uh, and is our brake pad sensor. And we need to just disconnect that. So that's that done as more rubber falls away from it. So we've come around to the front of the assembly again and it's this bolt that we need to take off so we can free up this bracket uh, and if we pan back out slightly you can see where that's located in the general scheme of things just the other side of the caliper so that's what I'm going to do now. A little extension it's a 10 mil. Oh that just came out really free really easy. Right, as I say, we're going to take this cotter pin out now, and I am using a screwdriver just to help free it out. 
seems to be coming. A little bit of leverage. Come on, there you come. You know you want to. Back with a smaller screwdriver. And it just came out no problem. Put that to one side. Now I'm not sure if I've got a big enough hammer. I may have to go for the full sledge if this doesn't work, but here goes nothing. And we're just gonna knock this through. And it's behaving, which is nice. Behaving all the way through, look at that. And it is, has freed up. Once you get it off this clip, this clip will come out. Careful with that brake sensor. I've got all new stuff, so it doesn't matter about that. And we can continue just to push that big pin out all the way the other side. Oh, and there it goes across the garage. Oh, shit. Right, next phase is to get the brake pad sensors out. We should just... That looks as if it's going to come out quite easily. Let's use a slightly bigger screwdriver. That one came out. And this one down here looks as if it's not in very good shape. Let's just get some light on it. Ah, that seems to have snapped. See, this one has a long thing, and that long thing seems to have snapped off. So, I think we will take the caliper off and then deal with it from there. So, that involves undoing this and this one down here to get the caliper off. And that's the next job. And I have my trusty, I should say, by the way, looking back down here, that these are. Uh, for you, know, you need a hex socket for that, which is what I've got here. It's a 10 mil, and I've got my Master Blaster 2000 um, wrench. So let me put that back on here so you guys can see, and let's see how we do. Oh, yeah, no worries. That's no bother. We'll leave that one like that. We'll come to this one first and get this one completely out. Now. now, before I do take that extra bolt off up here, I realise, of course, that it's probably better to take the brake pads out at this stage, but they are rubbing up against the the rotor, the disc. So that means that the two pistons that are in here are out slightly and pushing it against uh, the pad here. So I have my trusty channel wrench, would we call that? Probably we would. I don't know, it's a thing. Um, and I don't want to really want to scratch this, um, uh, this caliper. So I've got a little cloth here and I'm going to just put that on there. And then what I'm going to do so I don't scratch that. What I'm going to do is just compress and it will gradually go in. You can feel it going in all the way down to the bottom. That one's done and that should uh, come out in the fullness of time. Same on the other side. Let's do that. I really would like to get that wear sensor out the way but I can't seem to get that out so let's just see if this helps let's squeeze it in and it's sending brake fluid back up into the reservoir which I'll show you in a moment all the way in there we are no harm done there oops and then it's starting to rattle now um, so it doesn't matter oh that just popped out so that made life a little bit easier for us there didn't it now we can take the rest of our brake caliper off
fair to say that we needed new pads. You can see the difference in size between the old one and the new one. Anyway, let's put let's get the uh, the rotor off. That's the next job. Now the oop, the brake rotor is actually held on to the hub here just by these two screws. Now these two screws can be a nightmare, especially in a car like mine where uh, you know the, the maintenance has not been kept on top of. They can rust in, and you might need some penetrating fluid. But we're going to give it a shot with a Phillips screwdriver. I'm pushing in that way because if I strip these, the heads of this screw, then I'm going to have to drill it out, which would be an absolute nightmare. So I'm putting more force that way than I am rotating it. But let's just see if it will come out. So what kind of trouble we're in. Oh, it's come out quite easily. Thank you, car. Thank you very much. Let's have a look at the other one. Do the same again. <laughs> there we are. Okay. This is very unusual. Something's definitely going wrong here because it's all going right. When something's all going right, that means it's all going wrong somehow. Hmm, okay. Uh, that doesn't want to come out, why not? You see, this is what happens when you think everything's going okay, and in fact it's not. Let's see if we can leverage something. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, it just needs a bit of persuading. Now, the mistake I just made was having the handbrake on. Uh, and that's why I couldn't get this off straight away. I've taken the two screws out which go in here and on the other side and of course the problem was that the handbrake was on and I didn't think of that I'm an idiot this here is the handbrake what happens is when you put the handbrake on this goes out and it goes on the inside of the disc or rotor and then this little tool here allows us to tighten up the handbrake so you only use I don't know three notches instead of five to turn it on but anyway we have our rotor off uh, we have a very dirty inside uh, to our hub and everything else so now off camera what I've done is I have sprayed this with brake clean often what you find on these is that they have a film of stuff which uh, makes it you know rust proof and the same on this side which you don't really want uh, when you're driving the car but we're going to put this back on the car Right, there are two things about being a mechanic that I've noticed that cause you to make progress. One is perseverance when things go wrong, and two, you may not have the right tools. In this case, I had the right tools, I just needed to persevere. The problem I was having is I couldn't get this to seat, and I just gave it an extra shove, and it suddenly went on. And now we're back in again. These just need to be good and tight, they don't need to be talked up. Now, the next thing then is we need to get our pads back in and our new brake sensors on. So I'm going to start to take this brake sensor off from around the outside. It's clipped in, I think, down here. So I'm just going to unclip that round here and that frees up our brake pad sensor, which we, if we remove from our little clip there somehow, we'll just unclip this little person here, there we are, and take off our old brake pad sensor. One brake pad sensor out. Now, I've realised that we've made a mistake already because this caliper doesn't fit over this disc or rotor. It just won't go. These that things here are not wide enough. And I think what we've done is we've put the wrong disc on because this is the one for the rear, I think. And we'll notice that this will go straight through, <laughs> no problem. So take two, everyone. We're gonna swap this disc over. 
No worries, these things happen. So now we're going to put our brake pads in the caliper and see if we can get the caliper over the wheel. That should hang nicely. Come on, little carpet. There you are. Oh, nearly. There we are. And there's our caliper rehomed. So now we've got new bolts that we are bolting our caliper onto. It's very difficult to see, so excuse me if I get my head in the way, just so I can make sure these bolts go in. These are brand new bolts, and you'll notice they've got, I think these are called XYZ heads or XY something or other heads and I've got a XYZ socket which I'm going to be showing you in a just a moment. Look at those lovely pads, lovely rotor. Here is my XYZ, I think it's called XYZ, we'll call it XYZ anyway. The real name of it is on the screen which is going to fit nicely in there. The old bolts just were hex and these ones are not. Now I think it's 63 foot-pounds that we need to tighten these up to, so that is what we are going to do. Okay, so we're going to put our brake pad sensor in now. And I think that goes like that and pops down into the spot in there. And this baby goes in there. Like so. Come on, that's it. And then we've got another one just over here, which I need to get my head in to see. That goes in like I think that's gone in. We're going to put that back in its place in there. That's fine. And now around the other side, and then this plugs in to what's left of here of this. We are in. And then we'll have to just put this clip on here for now and promise to come back to it. There we are. Okay, that's in snug. Right, now the piece de resistance is putting that caliper pin back in. And I think we will just see what, how this goes. Now, the uh, caliper pin goes back in next, and you want to make sure that hole is on the inside because that's where the cotter pin is going to stay. I'll show you that when we get there. All the way through. Might need a bit of persuasion with my undersized hammer. And all that remains now is for the cotter pin to go back in. I might need to get my big head in the way to see it. There it is. Oh. And a little tap, I think, and we will have it. So we have one working and rotating assembly.
now we're going to uh, flush the brakes. Uh, and that starts at the brake uh, fluid reservoir here, which as you can see with all the compress compression of those pistons, uh, it is topped up to the brim. So I'm using just a straightforward turkey baster to just take out some of the stuff that's the old fluid that's in here. Um, so that it gets down to a reasonable level and isn't flowing over the top. So flushing the brakes then, I have one of these Motive Products Power Bleeders. And effectively what we're going to do is fill this with nice, clean, fresh brake fluid. We're going to attach this over here to the brake fluid reservoir. And then we're going to pump this full of pressure. Uh, so you've got nice clean brake fluid in here under pressure, forcing it into the reservoir. Now, of course, the old brake fluid has got nowhere to go. So what we're going to do is release the little nipples on the uh, brake calipers and allow the new stuff to go in. And when it starts coming through clear and there are two nipples on each corner, uh, then we know we can stop and turn, the, uh, turn, the, turn it off at each, uh, at each corner. So first step is filling this with brake fluid. You can see it's nice and clear compared to the stuff we're going to get out. And I think this should take two full cans of this dot four brake fluid. So there's one. Now what I've done in preparation of this is I've taken this, uh, the lid off obviously of the, of the reservoir. There is a little filter inside which just pulls out. So if you have a pair of, uh, of pliers, you'll be able to get that out, no problem. Uh, and then we're gonna put this on top. It just screws in nice and tight, doesn't need to be over tight. And then we're gonna pump this up to 20 PSI. Start, always start with the wheel that is furthest away from the reservoir. And that of course, given on this car, left-hand drive the Reservoir is here at the driver's side, so then you go to the passenger side rear. All right, so the first job is to take, there are two of these nipples, by the way, I should say, there's one here, and there's one over here on each side, each corner of the car, and they are just rubber, and they should just come off quite straightforwardly. As ever, I make things look painfully difficult. There we are. Uh, Come on, off you come. There we are. That's it. And then what we're going to do is connect up our catch can over the top of there. And then using our 10 mil, 11 mil spanner, undo the pressure. And we should start to see there we are, you can see it coming out, the old stuff. Okay, and then when that's connected, we're going to pump the brake, brake pedal five times. One, two, three, four, five. So we're starting to see that the fluid doesn't have any bubbles in it. It's a noticeably lighter color than what's in the catch can. And there's quite a bit in this catch can. Remember, I've got to do this, well, eight times. So I think probably that that is the first nipple done. So what I'm going to do is close that off and then I'm going to go and do the other nipple on the other side. So we've got our second one done and this is neatly coming through. There is no air bubbles at all in this one. And then it's just a question of rinse and repeat another three times after this. And then our brake job will be completely done. So all in all, we got two full catch cans out of this car before it went clear again and pro tip the pumping of the brake pedal really forces it out of the nipple up to the through the pipe and down into the catch can so um, keep the pressure high on your uh, power bleeder but also uh, pump those brakes because then it really starts to come through and then you can really see the difference between the old horrible dark brown stuff and the sort of clearer yellow stuff so next uh, we will put this wheel on, uh, back on, and then we will go and test the car and sort of bed the brakes in a little bit and see what it feels like. Okay, so we have our power bleeder unscrewed. We're just gonna put our filter back in. It just goes in like so. And then we can put our lid back on. Oh, we've got 
nicely bled brakes. Happy days are here again. Okay, so testing the brakes, bedding them in, they feel so much better, I have to say. The, the pedal travel is much less, the, uh, and it just feels as if it's holding, slowing the car down nicely. What I like to do when I'm uh, bedding in brakes is to get it up to a good speed, up to say 60 miles an hour, and then slow down almost to zero, get some heat into those brakes and just get the pads matching up with the rotors. So slowing down and then speeding up a little bit and doing that repeatedly actually until, well, until it, until, you know, the number of times probably you need to do it 20 or 30 times before it's, before it's done properly and then you know it's better. Yet. But anyway, thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, not a how-to video, but at least a journey on how to get the brakes on this box. So we gave it a good shot and I think we've ended up rather well brakes feel much better um, so next time probably will be the soft top which is an even bigger challenge than the brakes um, so join us for that um, subscribe like all of those things and I will see you in the next one thanks for watching